Welcome back, my friends, to TFT Hyperroll and day two of our tribute to Kabuko, who was inexplicably buffed in the last patch. Now, sometimes you're going to need the game's help to tell you which direction to go. This one started with three cost champ, and it looked like it was going to head in a duelist direction, which is not a build I really like, but I was willing to go with it. But when it gave me Teemo as Caretaker's Alley, which means I'm pretty much guaranteed a gold three-star Teemo and a two-star Kabuko, well, it's time for the tricky pugilists. Now, I would have loved to have start with a slightly stronger build. My only two-star is Kabuko, and while he gets very tanky later in the game, not necessarily early, because he's going to be building up throughout the entire match. And I often end up in a little bit of a quandary with this. I like to split my carries, but Sivir's ult, much like Senna's, is going to boost the people next to her. In this case, it's attack speed. But I've seen too many times where an entire team just rushes to the side with a particular champ on it, and then the other side can clean it up. Item-wise, since I am guaranteed a gold Teemo in this match, I'm going to want to just add as much power onto that little guy as possible. And I've switched Sivir out for Bard, because he's just in general a stronger unit, but this team right now, it's not doing well, because we don't have a strong enough front line, we don't have a second two-star champ to go next to Kabuko and take some of the pressure off, and our back line is also still a little weak due to lack of two-star champs. The second set of augments look like a pretty easy take, Unified Resistance is really strong, but Silver Veil is always tempting. However, tankiness in front is going to be a priority. And we are continuing to stack up Teemo as our main carry, since again, we're pretty much guaranteed a gold 3-star Teemo. With a couple of items on Teemo, and now a couple of 2-star champs up front, we have a much better chance here. We also have the 2-star Bard. So we're going to be able to start getting some momentum heading in the correct direction. Unfortunately, we're not up to the gold 3-star Kabuko yet, so we're not stacking health as quickly. It's a pretty big jump from 2 to 3 stars. 2 stars, he's gaining 80 per round, 3 stars, 200 per round. The difference between 1 and 2 isn't that much, as it's 60, 80, and then 200. But we just need the one Kabuko, and then the few more Teemos that we are guaranteed as just part of this match from our first augment. We've gotten the Rageblade, Blue Buff, and Rabadon's Death Cap onto him, so Teemo can finally start doing a lot of damage. It is time for our final set of augments, and nothing really exciting here, so we're going to reroll them. And Pandora's items is going to be hard to beat, unless we can get something that will work with Trick Shot, but no such luck so we can go ahead grab that where it's going to come with an item but one that we're not necessarily going to use straight up front but we can go ahead and start putting on pieces and parts of items that we know we want with galio sivir and riven we have also triggered story weaver so we can put kale in between timo and bard to speed up their attacks we're keeping sivir in the bottom right just as a distraction and you can see it works there keeping their sivir attacking ours and allowing us to win that round and we did pick up our gold three star kabuko although a little later than i would normally like and I tend to find that Tricky Pugilist hits a power spike at about this point. It's when you're at that 4-4. You've got all of your trick shots, so they are getting their maximum bounce, and your front line is strong enough to hold off most comps at this point. And we've gone ahead and moved Bard over next to Sivir and kept Kaisa and our gold 3-star Teemo next to Kale, so they get the automatic speed boost at the start of the round keeping Timo in the corner so there's just a tiny bit more meat between him and whatever's coming to get him. Now normally I like to stack a lot of health on Kabuko, but it's not really helping out all that much, but we do want to pick up a Deathblade for Kaisa. Those are some excellent items for her, especially when her trick shot bounces, it's going to devastate the opposing team. Teemo, though, really is the powerhouse in this one because at gold three stars with those items, he is throwing a lot of dumplings into the back line. Normally, I would say mushrooms, but it's dumplings in this season. And while I would have loved to end up with a better item, Redemption was the only option that would add health and healing onto Kabuko. I like Dragon's Claw, usually with Warmogs, 
but sometimes you just got to take what you get even in cases of Pandora's items and you can see it's Kabuko and Timo who hold this up and we are now into the top four. It is time for our final two item choices and there is nothing here I really like. I can go ahead and grab an adaptive helm and put it on one of our frontliners. I was originally going to go with Galio, but he's only one star, so I go ahead and use Silas. Again, here, there's nothing I like. I have a choice. I could just let it sit on the bench and turn into whatever and hope, but it's late in the game, so I'd rather have something. Since I have two two-star Silas's and that will be decent for him, I decide to go that route and just put it on Silas because he can be pretty devastating into a backline. And Tricky Pugilist, much like Boomstick Brawl, is very good for getting you into the top four. But winning is going to take a little something extra. We don't have optimal items on Kuko to hold things back. And while Timo is strong, he's still only a two cost. And really, this season, more than any other season I've ever seen, you need the gold three star four cost. And so once we are one away on Kaisa, it is time to dump everything else and just go for it. It only took one roll after that. But once we have Kaisa in place, we can put her into the corner so that she remains safer longer and hope that she can carry us through the end. And we get to face off against a ghost team first, so it's not totally the challenge you want to see to really test whether the build is working since it's usually easier to get through the ghost team. You can see Kaisa does just a ton of damage, especially with those items, she can clear a team out. Now the person we are facing is running a full story weaver, so we have grabbed an Irelia just to block the chance of having to deal with a gold three star Irelia. You can see Kaisa is staying safe in that corner and Kabuko is holding up a ton of the damage, which allows us to secure the victory. And I'll save you wondering, the person tried to go for a three star, was not able to get there and surrendered and it was GG for everyone. Hope you enjoyed video two of Kabuko week. Uh, video three, yes, yeah, really got something special in it. So as always, have an absolutely, absolutely awesome day.